Greetings music lovers, Rick Ferguson, rickfergusonmusic.com. Thank you for joining me and thank you for watching. I appreciate it a, a great deal. Today's topic I like to call uh, Chopin, Goethe, and the Sorrows of Young Werther. The Sorrows of Young Werther refers to a novel written in 1774 by the, the German poet, writer, philosopher, uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Uh, this book was written in a span of five weeks by the 24-year-old Goethe and it set off a firestorm throughout Europe. Uh, it is more than semi-autobiographical. Uh, it was essentially a means through which the young Goethe was was uh, dealing with with some of his own demons at that time, uh, centered around his his own failed, unrequited love for a woman named Charlotte Buffs, B U F F S. Uh, the characters, the three primary characters in the novel are Werther, Charlotte, and then Albert. Charlotte is uh, engaged to be married to Albert in the same way that Charlotte Booth was uh, engaged to be married to another man in uh, Goethe's own life. Uh, and this, this novel begins to, to explore the depths of a feeling uh, from, from uh, the, the deepest despair to, uh, to a sense of, of really uh, you know, heightened euphoria. So it, it's very, uh, I, I suppose we would describe it as being somewhat bipolar, uh, but more than any other single literary work, perhaps it was the sorrows of young Werther that really set the stage to usher in the phenomenon that, that became known as 19th century romanticism, you know, which did embrace the individualist artist, which did embrace the exploration and the expression of heightened emotional states, uh, especially, you know, not, not just from a literary standpoint, of course, but, but, uh, but musically. Um, this was such a profoundly uh, impactful literary work that uh, it, it basically catapulted Goethe to overnight stardom throughout Europe. Young men uh, throughout the continent and England began apparently to dress in the manner of Werther. There were even uh, quite a number of reported copycat suicides attributed to the the impact of this novel. Think about that. So um, not only was Goethe really uh, you know having a catharsis experience through through the writing and publication of this book, but he struck some kind of deep chord, especially with with the younger generation in Europe at that time. Um, in this particular uh, instance, later in life, Goethe really tried to, to get away from this. As a matter of fact, in 1787, uh, Goethe revised the book to try to tone things down just a little bit. Uh, and so there was a second 1787 publication of this. But later on, uh, you know, I've got a couple of quotes from from Goethe, which are you know somewhat somewhat telling. So as he commented to his secretary in 1821, quote, "It must be bad if not everybody was to have a time in his life, or I suppose also her life, when he felt as though Werther had been written exclusively for him." Uh, and I think that's that's certainly talking about the personal nature of this and the fact that that a writer would would really begin to explore such, such personal territory and basically open themselves, open their process, uh, you know, for everyone to know about, for everyone to read. 
And you know, 1774, this was a, a part of the, the pre-romantic period that's often known as Sturm und Drang, Storm and Stress. And really, it was a relatively brief period of time, like maybe a couple of decades at the most, where artists, musicians in particular, were exploring a, a deeper, more intense emotional experience with music. More music being written, for instance, in minor keys, but in particular, uh, a more intense, sudden, often unexpected shifts from softer to, to really intensely louder sounds and, and exploring a, a more intense sound spectrum in which to work. So, you know, composers who would have been involved in the Sturm und Drang movement would have been uh, Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach, uh, Josef Haydn, and then, of course, there is Beethoven. Um, so, uh, this was an, a, 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 a really, um, you know, short period of time that, that then blossomed a number of decades later into, uh, into full-blown 19th century romanticism. Uh, one more bit of, of uh, Goethe, Werther or trivia. Even 50, even 50 years after the book's publication, Goethe wrote in a conversation with Johann Peter Eckermann about the emotional turmoil he had gone through while writing this book. Quote, That was a creation which I, like the pelican, not sure why he chose the pelican, fed with the blood of my own heart. So this was an intensely personal experience. And, you know, pretty soon after the, the publication of Werther, Goethe actually began going in, in a different direction in terms of the focus of his own writing, the focus of his own poetry, and his philosophical leanings away from, from the hyper-romanticism. As a matter of fact, later he, he called, uh, you know, at the end of his life, he called romanticism, you know, apparently a, a movement that is sick. Um, and, and I don't know that, that a lot of writers would necessarily disagree with that. It's a very interesting uh, source for debate and, and conversation. So, fascinating book. Um, I would, it's, it's a fairly easy read, but if you're interested in uh, how a literary work, a single literary work in this case, can, can really open the door, has the power to open the door to a significant cultural artistic movement. This is a good book to be familiar with. Just absolutely fascinating. And of course, you know, then you began to have iterations of thematic material coming from this book in, in, uh, throughout the 19th century, you know, like the, the, the uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, for instance, oh my goodness, and, and all the kinds of, uh, you know, the Gothic writing. Uh, there was the French composer Jules Massenet, who wrote an opera uh, much later in the 19th century based on Verter. So this book seemed to really capture the zeitgeist and, and move Romanticism in, into place. Um, from a musical perspective, one piece that, that comes to mind among <laughs> millions uh, that, would, that would serve to, to illustrate this is uh, actually a piece by Frederick Chopin, one of his nocturnes. Um, Opus 27, number one, C sharp minor. Uh, this, this work really, I think, is a wonderful illustration of, of moving through various emotional uh, territory, landscapes, um, moving from, from minor to major, but C-sharp minor in particular, uh, sometimes being referred to as, as a really tragic key. And so, if I were going to be imagining some kind of uh, version of uh, the Werther story on the, on the silver screen, you know, I would be very tempted to, to use this particular uh, nocturne as 
the backdrop for this because I think that it really does capture uh, a lot of the meaning in the book. Uh, so I'm going to, to share this with you and I hope that you enjoy it.
much for tuning in. And uh, if, if you need a, a little bit of intensely uh, romantic reading, I think that The Sorrows of Young Veritera, that is the novel for you. So thank you for joining me, and uh, be sure to come visit me at rickfergusonmusic.com. Bye-bye.